uh, uh, on the limelight at the moment, you will have definitely cause to say that it is being selective. Well, the truth is that the PDP government has been uh, in power for so many years, 16 years, and so uh, naturally you will have uh, the bulk of the corrupt persons coming from that uh, party. So if the system is going against such people, you will say, oh, it is PDP that uh, they are fighting. But they have been in power all these years, 16 years. So that is why maybe it appears seemingly that uh, the corruption fight is uh, selective. But I, as one, as a politician, would insist that the fight against corruption must come to the electoral uh, process. Because unless we sanitize the electoral process and ensure that it is um, devoid of corruption, we will always get people in power that are corrupt and who would perpetuate corruption at all levels. And to do that, you don't fight corruption with brute force. You don't fight it with guns. You fight corruption with intelligence. And you fight corruption with the rule of law. Due process must be followed. And to fight electoral corruption, you would need to put in place um, uh, the modern ways of uh, electioneering that is uh, you we started with the card reader the internet process and you must ensure that we go completely digitalized when it comes to our electioneering process that is the only way you can fight corruption i understand the people in power especially at the legislature and the executive arm of government are uh, uh, worry a bit worry about uh, the uh, electoral process being completely digitalized and it's uh, to give room for manipulation and corrupt practices but I would insist and would suggest very strongly that we must completely ensure that our electoral process is, is digitalized that is the only way we would ensure that we fight corruption it is at the place at the point we elect our, 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 our leaders that we we find out that Corrupt people get in there corruptly, and they perpetuate corruption. But if you eliminate the process whereby corruption is not perpetuated in the electoral process, then that way also you will have people who would fight corruption uh, come into the system, and people who get in there not through corrupt means will ensure that uh, uh, the rule of law uh, takes its place and will ensure that good governance is what the people will get. All right, let's come back to Lagos. Uh, Mr. Shomumi, he also said something that you said earlier about the electoral process. And um, Ajia said something about we are in an extraordinary time and sometimes you need extraordinary measures. But how can this be done within the law? And we've heard, of, of course, also of how the wheel of, uh, of justice grinds slowly. How can this corruption fight be, you know, pushed forward enough without breaking the laws? It's quite very sad that um, many Nigerians have not noticed what is really going on currently. The federal government, the executive firm, is waging this war against corruption, um, while at the same time there are also other forces who are working against the fight against corruption. Um, in our country in different ways and they are part of the realms of the estates you know uh, I'll give you examples of what I mean for instance when the NJC revealed his um, own rules on disciplined judges you know who are involved who committed infractions in the course of discharging their duties they have now eliminated created a situation where if a complainant is thought to have leaked the information to the press Knowing that the press will not disclose the sources of information, but if they think the complainant is the one that leaked the information, then it is assumed that that complaint has been dropped. So basically, all it takes is a suspicion, and then that is dropped, because there is no way how the press will provide the information, even when you threaten to jail them. They are not, by their own ethics, you know, um, allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, you also have the other arm, the legislative arm, with what they are currently doing, which is uh, the review they carried out of um, the CCB rules, you know, Act. What they are doing with the CCB stroke CCT Act is that 
look if somebody ccb must of must inform any alleged offender of the rules and once you have been informed once you have admitted in writing then that is the end of the matter there is no sanction nothing according to the to what they just did yesterday you know it's quite very um, troubling that we are taking one step forward and two steps backward on the part of the executive itself we should follow just the example of what Mugabe did yesterday when he has the minister, an accused minister, you know, to, 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 to resign and go and defend himself. You know, we need, and we've been there before. We've seen an example in the past when uh, Professor Adenike Grinch, who was the minister for health, was asked to step down and face trial. The woman was found innocent at the end of the day, you know, and she had her dignity and respect you know, restored, rather than continue to serve as the Minister of Health, you know, in a suspicious situation. But we also have the judges accusing some people, whether right or wrong, anybody facing allegations on the part of the executive, legislature, or judiciary, is it that they all step down and clear themselves? Mm -hmm. What we cannot do is to say, judges, you step down, but uh, those who are facing as, um, allegations and trial in the legislature should remain in office, ministers are should remain in office. We cannot fight corruption that way. If we want to fight corruption, we need to be totally honest with it and be committed to it. If our rule says, once there's an allegation, you resign, then you have to resign. After all, uh, serving as minister or serving as uh, is, is not necessarily the job for life, you know, because it's, it's tenured. You will live at now, the end. In other words, the... those public officers should be above suspicion. They must be above suspicion. They must be seen by the public to be above suspicion. If people think they are not above suspicion, then we have a problem. What we can do is to also look at, at the judiciary level, introducing ju um, um, jury trial. When you look at what we've done with the 1999 Constitution, we brought in you know, the American presidential system of government only to the extent of politics. And then we jettison the legal aspect of it, which is you know, trial by jury. So we need to, and I think the last time we had trial by jury in Nigeria was 1976, if I'm correct. We need to revisit that and then think about how do we ensure public confidence in the judiciary? Because there is no doubt all what has been going on has affected the perception of uh, the judiciary as the last hope of the common man. So we now need to move away from that and introduce meaningful you know, changes mm. you know, to our judiciary. Mm. At the same time, we now need to have a national resolve on what do we do with people facing allegations, whether they are on the part of the executive, legislature, or judiciary. Do they need to leave office or not? In my view, they need to leave office. It's not punitive. While the investigation, While the investigation is going on. It's not punitive. It's, a, uh, it's protective is to ensure that you do not face unfair allegation of tampering with investigation. So these are issues which we need to, re we need to look at. We have to ensure there's that balance so that we don't end up creating the executive, you know, now dictating what happens to the legislature and judiciary. This uh, separation of powers must be retained. But we have to look at those institutions and how do we do them. I don't necessarily subscribe to NGC reviewing the whole procedure. We need to involve. It has to be broader than that, so that there is a nationally accepted. Maybe that's just taking care of, of it on their own end. Yes, yeah. but uh, in a way, they are also involved because some of the judges being accused, fairly or unfairly, you know, are colleagues to the people actually reviewing the laws. There is no way how we can uh, ignore the perception that look, people might think, oh, they're only trying to cover up their own colleagues. It might not be true. That they are closing ranks. <laughs> yeah, but they are closing ranks. It may not necessarily be true. It's about perception. How do we ensure we have a fair process, you know, of reviewing the Judicial Code of Conduct? How do we ensure that we agree on the minimum that should happen if a public officer is accused or a political appointee is accused of committing a crime or the other. Okay, okay we, we just Pause go on, on a break and um, when we come back we'll be talking more about how to ensure that we have a fair process in this fight against corruption. Just stay with us on Sunrise. <laughs>